In this video, we will be going over LabVIEW data value references, or as they're commonly called, DVRs. If you've heard about DVRs or you've seen a DVR before, this video may not necessarily be for you. We're just going to go over what they are and how to use them. The, the thing with DVRs is it's one of those LabVIEW tricks that solves a specific uh, use case. It's been in the language for a while, but it's not commonly known, and, and in fact, I'm pretty sure NI actively discourages using them. The reason is is that they're dangerous. They're very dangerous, and they're uh, they they break data flow programming. But there's certain situations where the DVR is appropriate, and they're uh, they work well for uh, specific things. But you need to understand how to use them. So DVR is basically like a managed pointer, per se, in another programming language. If you in Data flow programming in LabVIEW, you, you're running the data along the, the the wire, right? And you're usually typically going left to right. The data flows through your VIs and does that execution. But in certain situations, that's not the case. For instance, you may have spawned up uh, an asynchronous thread somewhere, and it needs to report back some data that it's that it's finding, or you need to control it at control it that asynchronous uh, VI using some sort of signaling mechanism. And for some reason, you don't want to use queues or semaphores. The other big issue that I typically use them for is instrument handles. So for instance, if you're running a test and test sequence and you're using LabVIEW classes in there, sometimes it, you, you don't necessarily want to run the, the, the wire all the way through. So you don't want to have an in and out on every single step. You might just have a dynamic dispatch uh, VI and wire in the in, but not wire the out back out. Some, some people think that's sloppy, but there's a, there's reasons why that simplifies certain problems. and But if you do that, then you need to have a DVR to point to one copy of the data. The big advantage of using this with classes is that it, it turns the LabVIEW model of pass by value into more of a, a quasi pass by reference for certain pieces in uh, the private class data. So let's get to showing off how to do it. It's not obvious i mean there's not a palette that says okay here's how you do your dvr but typically what you'll do is you'll drag and you're going to want to use an in place event structure and then if you right click on here you've got a bunch of of options and you want to add the the data value reference read write element and then if you right click on that node it will get you to the memory control palette you could have dug around on the, the pile screen to find that, but that's that's where this is. And then we're going to get a new DVR and wire it in. Okay. And this is the only reference that you, you need to keep track of because you will have to close that at some point or you will bleed memory. Okay, whatever you wire into here, it changes the DVR type. And then over here, I'm gonna just close it off. You would not normally do this because you'd pipe the DVR reference out somewhere else and have like a, a read and a write or a get and a set, depending on how you wanna name them. And then how this works is the DVR reference is referencing, in this case, a Boolean in mem LabVIEW memory. And when it gets to the in-place event structure, what you're saying on the left is, okay, go read that. And on the right, set the new value. One of the tricks you can do too is you can allow parallel read-only access. And what that means is if you have a piece of read-only data and you don't want like another thread locking it, it's just a, a viewer or, some, or a, a bus monitor or something, then you could enable read-only access and do it. This is a like a sequence structure dialog diagram block. You can anything you put in here will be will will run. You should limit the number of operations you do because as soon as the LabVIEW code hits this in-place structure and starts executing, then the only person that can read that or can write to that DVR if you, and or read it if you haven't enabled the parallel read-only access is whoever's got it right now. So when they get it, it locks it. It's like putting a, a mutex on top of a pointer. And once it's locked, then it has to execute and get out of the block before anybody else can use it. So if you're running four parallel plant, uh, threads are all 
operating on the, the, the same cluster for some reason, then thread one grabs it, does its thing, and then one of the other three threads could then grab it and do its thing, and, and the other ones would wait until it, the, until it was open before they could use it. So in this case, we read it, and I'm gonna do just a basic operation, whatever it is, we're gonna knot it, and wire it back out. And that's that's pretty much it. If you wanted to, if you had another VI, say for instance, let's do a more of a quasi real life example. Let's get a visa resource. Change that to constant. I don't have anything in this VM for Visa, it looks like. So if I set this up and then I created a control and I added this control to like an instrument uh, driver class inside the class private data and then in my code I only use gets and sets, it enforces that only one thing can be used in the instrument handle at a time. But in that case, this you you would when you created it, you'd have to create a pipe it out out of the VI on, on a new operation, and then on a close operation, you would run the delete. And that's a short overview on how to set up a DVR.